Why do you think that apps like that are important? Well, I think one of the things that we need to do as, as a society, as, as, as a country is be there for each other and make sure people have access to the tools they need. Uh, you know, government can't be the single solution for everyone, but we can do a good job of connecting people to resources that are out there in their communities. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's these apps, I'll talk about them in a sec, but uh, one of the things we did, it was really an eye opener for me when we uh, sat down with, uh, uh, leaders in the black community uh, a few years ago to talk about some of the big challenges that they were facing and how we were going to fight systemic racism and specifically go at anti-black racism. Um, there were lots of requests on, you know, fixing the justice system and, and the uh, over-representation of black Canadians in, in, in incarceration. And that, that was sort of, we expected to hear that. And yes, that's something we need to work on. Um, the two other things that were interesting, more money for black entrepreneurs, which uh, we certainly did. We created a program specifically for that, for economic success, which uh, we might not have heard had we not listened to them. But the other one was specific supports uh, for grassroots community organizations run uh, by the Black Canadian community for the Black Canadian community around mental health and resilience. So we actually invested directly in mental health programs that are targeted for the community, by the community. And there's examples all across the country of uh, great organizations that are there specifically for that community where, as you say, Zara, um, you know, there's, there's a common ground and an understanding where you don't have to break through nine barriers before you get to something really, really personal, where you get, you get that understanding and that, that, that connection from the first off. So that, that's something that we're looking at doing more and more of in the government in a way that, that connects people and communities uh, in ways that, that really are most effective. But uh, at a large scale, we created a, a Wellness Together portal uh, early on in the pandemic that people uh, have accessed by the millions uh, at, that pulls together all sorts of resources for people who are uh, struggling with their mental health. Uh, and as you mentioned, we just launched a few weeks ago, the Pocket Well app uh, that links to that online portal, but uh, is a, a tool in itself where you can do self, self assessments, you can see how you're going over time, you can compare to the baseline you had before and, and, and next, and those sorts of things really, really, uh, are those tools that are low barrier to entry? Obviously, it's a free app, but it's also something that, you know, you're not being judged. You don't have to go and sit face to face with someone who's, you know, and tell, you know, open yourself up in, in a way that, you know, some people do, some people are less comfortable with. Um, it's, it's a tool that you have control over that has a lot of, uh, of capacity at your fingertips. And that's, that's the kind of thing that uh, governments are trying to do more and more. And we're really pleased with those, uh, those, uh, those tools. Uh, I'll throw up a link to them in, in, on my social media feed so you guys can uh, find out more and download the app. But uh, really, there's, there's a lot of things out there to create resilience in society. When you think about you know, who you turn to for mental health support, yes, you know, there are psychologists and psychiatrists and doctors and, and people who are professionals in that. But so often you want to turn to a friend, you turn to a neighbor, um, you know, as, a, as, as a, you know, maybe it's a, your, your hairdresser, maybe it's, a, uh, you know, the, 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 the waiter who serves you coffee uh, every Thursday at lunch when you go to your favorite spot. Those interactions, if more Canadians have a grasp of uh, the challenges around mental health that their fellow citizens may be, may be leaning, and a better ability to lean in and to respond to each other and say, well, how are you doing? And can I cheer you up? And, you know, you, know, you want to talk about it. Um, in those little human interactions, so you don't get to a level where you need heavy intervention from a medical system, but we're creating resilience within our community of people who are looking out for each other's mental health the way we've been looking out for each other in COVID on our physical health of wearing masks, keeping your distance and being there for, for your elderly neighbors, those sorts of things, that, that is really powerful. And, and, and that's something we're trying to encourage and create. And, and one of the reasons why I'm so excited uh, that uh, Minister Bennett has the, uh, has the portfolio for mental health and addictions uh, to drive it at the federal level. Thank you so much for that, Prime Minister. <clears throat> and just sharing your, your views, look, at the end of the day, we're, we're all human. We all deal with all of these issues. And, and I hope that people know that our physical health and our mental health are literally at par and both are equally important for us to take care of. There are resources out there. And I, 
um, I really encourage everybody to, to get in touch, to, to, to really reach out and for, for each and every one of us to reach out to our friends and neighbors and say, hey, folks, are you guys doing okay? Uh, any parting words for us, Yara and Sara? So I, I, last word to Sara, because she's just doing such a great, <laughs> such a great what you're doing on, on your Instagram uh, group and also with, with Wellness. You know, we're, we're, we're only as strong as the connections that we make with one another. Um, you know, there, it, the, when we can find that safe space with that one person, that one friend who, who, who really gets you and that that person at the same time, you know, resources are not just about um, you being able to access them, but for those that want to help someone else that they can access them to, to know, to know how to be there for you so that we can show up for one another. And that's really what the mental health discussions that we're having now are about. Um, we're, we've moved beyond the stigma. Um, we're moving into the space of what can I do now? Where can I get the help I need? And, and I'm thrilled that people are asking for it. I'm thrilled that people are looking for it. And I'm thrilled that you, Sara, have created a space where they can find it. And, and, and for also for us, for creating wellness together and, and pocket well, so that people can start to find it. So, Sarah, I'll leave the last word to you on this, on this day of talking about mental health and, and, and share some thoughts on a head out for the evening. Thank you. Absolutely. So I want to start off by saying something that I'm sure a lot of us have heard. It says, and that is check yourself before you wreck yourself. And so I wanted to piggyback a little bit on the Pocketwell app. I did get a chance to download it and play with it a little bit as well. It's very user friendly. And the first thing that you see is a self-assessment, right? And essentially that is you checking yourself. And as Prime Minister Trudeau was saying, the best way to be able to take care of something is to jump into preventative measures right from the get-go. Not everybody needs to have access every single time to complex care from a medical team, but for many of us, it, it is what it looks like on the micro level, which is the day-to-day -day stuff. So how am I feeling today? What's going on? Have I eaten? Did I sleep well? You know what, do I have a headache? Is it just, is it the weather? What have you? So when you're constantly checking yourself, you're able to make those small changes to some your day-to-day -day life. And that in its very essence, like I mentioned earlier, is what self-care looks like. And that is also very holistic. So eating, nutrition, moving, reading a book, just taking a shower, you know, putting in your peppermint oil every couple of minutes or so. If you need to just find those moments of Zen, or if you have kids in the house and it's just, it might mean they're going just into the bathroom saying, Hey, I got kids. I got to use the bathroom, shutting the door and just sitting there for like two minutes, even that as well. Those pockets of, of Zen that we find in the day is very much a self-assessment that we have to do for ourselves. And only when you start doing it on the micro level are you going to be able to get to the bigger stuff. And that truly is holistic mental health in a nutshell. Thank you so much for that, Sara. Prime Minister, parting words for Canadians. Oh, no, just uh, hang in there and be, be there for each other. I mean, this is something that we've really seen over these past two two years of, of people uh, being there, stepping up to, to care for each other. That's one of the reasons Canada's made it uh, through this pandemic better than so many of our peer countries, uh, because Canadians are, are good to each other and are thoughtful about each other and are doing the right things, even though we're exhausted. Uh, and it's been tough and it's been incredibly tough for, uh, for some people. But uh, the more we stick together, the more we know uh, that leaning on each other and being there for each other and supporting each other is going to get us through this and back to the things we love. Uh, that's, uh, that's what we're focused on as a government. We're, we're working hard to have your backs every single day. Uh, but Canadians are having each other's backs as well, which is really awesome and, uh, and something that uh, we're just going to continue powering through all together. Thank you so much for that. And I'll just share with, with our audience, um, you know, having a boss like, uh, like Prime Minister Trudeau for our country, he's like, I feel the ultimate frontline worker. Uh, he deals with a lot of the, the stress of our country, of, 